Hey guys, David Fine from Keys Moths. Today we are going to mount some giant moths. In fact, these are giant sphinx moths and we caught a fresh one. So we're gonna mount the giant sphinx together. It's actually the largest sphinx moth in North America. The males have a wingspan of around six to seven inches. The females get even bigger. I've got a whole nother video where I show the size comparison and all that, so I'm not gonna get into that too much. But guys, what we're gonna do here, we are going to mount some giant sphinx moths together. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, I'm gonna show you one of my absolute favorite South Florida moths, and we're gonna put them on a mounting board together. Uh, let's get to the video. All right, guys, so these are male giant sphinx that I caught. Um, actually quite a long time ago and they've been in my my cabinet where I keep my mounting specimens uh, on the boards uh, for some time now it's actually been a while uh, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take these guys off the board with you and talk about Cochidius Antius the giant sphinx and this is a phenomenal bug by the way um, I reuse a lot of these um, strips several times just because it's a pain in the butt to make more and I'm kind of lazy too. So I reuse them until they get too holy and then once they have too many holes in them, then I will retire them. But for today, uh, I'm going to reuse this because we're going to mount several species or specimens on the same board uh, together. And so... Uh, Taking the guys off the board is uh, is pretty easy. One of the things you just got to make sure you as you're taking these pins off, like they, they're being held on by all these little pins, and as you're taking the pins off, you got to make sure that you don't accidentally knock an antenna or a leg or something like that. Because if you do, your antenna breaks, the leg breaks off, something like that. And then your specimen is is ruined, or at least it it's just annoying when you break a leg or an antenna. Um, and so we try not to do that. These specimens here, guys, are all going to the McGuire Center for Lepidoptera Research up in uh, Gainesville, and that's actually where I donate the vast majority of the specimens that I take are being donated to the McGuire Center. Uh, I don't need to keep a whole bunch of stuff in my in my house. Uh, what I'll do is I'll keep specimens for doing videos and you know scientific you know when I'm when I'm comparing different species or or even wing pattern variation or seasonal variation. I'll keep a few uh, specimens just so that I can do that work here at my house without traveling back up to Gainesville to, to observe the specimens that I uh, prepared. Uh, but most of the most of the stuff that I catch, guys, gets donated directly to the McGuire Center. So um, I'm actually this fall. I plan on making a trip up there and donating a substantial amount of uh, of my specimens to them. So, guys, this is the giant sphinx. These were all caught in a bucket trap. In guess what? Guess what key? These were caught in Big Pine Key, which is really cool because there is almost no pond apple in Big Pine Key. And so that's a cool thing. Now these these specimens here are, have a little bit of miles on them. You know, like you can see this one here has got some rubbing on the wing. This one here has got a little chip out of the wing. Uh, and this guy here is the wing is complete, but. You know, it's just missing some of the scales um, from the wings. But man, what a what a huge moth that is, right? Uh, they have these uh, translucent little windows here uh, on their hind wing. Uh, and they are just amazing, amazing uh, creatures. So guys, what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to mount a fresh giant sphinx. But before I do, I am going to... Let's see if I have enough room. Hopefully I have enough room to do this. I am going to take these guys off the board. 
and put them in a display case like this where they will await the proper uh, labeling. So I've got, I've got labels made for them. I just didn't, I don't have them with me. So once I label the specimens, then I'll put them in a box where I will uh, eventually drive them up to Gainesville and deposit the specimens up there. So as you can see, I've got my little pest strips thing in here. And see, the giant sphinx are annoying because they take up a lot of room. So I'm going to try and get all three of these guys kind of in one little row here. So I can make, I'm going to need to make room for it's my little buck moth. And I got my little tiny viceroy here. Uh, I raised the faithful, faithful beauties one day. Got a bunch of specimens there. Um, those are also going to get donated here shortly. And this is a carpenter worm moth that we did another video on. Started to get eaten by a cockroach in the in the where when it was being mounted. But guys, these are the giant sphinx. They're going to get a label here shortly from Big Pine Key, and um, they're going to get donated soon. So. But that's not why we came to show you this video. Um, I'm actually going to show you, um, get my tripod working here. Guys, when, uh, at Moth Week 2022, July 24th, uh, my buddy Ricky and I went down to the Keys and we actually were able to find some really cool moths. But one of the coolest moths that we found on Key Largo was this giant sphinx. And in fact, guys, all of the moths that I took from an entire night of moth collecting fit in this little tiny container. So we saw thousands of moths. And so this is all I took home. Just want you guys to see that. Uh, we're not out there killing everything we see. Um, it is everything I caught that night fits in this little container. I process these specimens. I make sure I make any information and data updates to my website and my database. And, uh, and then we donate the specimens after we're done using them. So one of the problems with the giant sphinx is that it's so big that it doesn't fit in any of the envelope, the glassine envelopes that we can buy. So we actually have to make our own. This one is just wax paper, and we actually had to kind of make a staple here to get it to stay shut. But this is wax paper, guys, and I'm going to get this specimen out. Guys, this is so cool. This is one of the freshest male specimens that I've ever seen, and we were able to collect actually I think there's three of them that came to the light sheet and the the giant sphinx let me say something here real quick all right guys the giant sphinx actually has some cool body features and before we mount it I want to show you one of my favorites it has one of the longest proboscis that I've ever seen on any moth or butterfly <laughs> Let me blow some scales off there. Guys, look at the size of the proboscis. Right here, the proboscis starts right here and curls like this and tucks it underneath its head. Now, what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna stick a pin into the middle of this proboscis and I wanna show you just how long the proboscis is on this on this creature. Let me see if I can get find that little middle. No, let's see, I'm on a hard time. Oh, there we go. Okay, guys, look at this. Check this thing out. Look at this thing. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going. Oh my gosh, guys, look at this. Look at this. This this moth feeds, I've heard, on something called a trumpet flower. 
and even some of the ghost orchids, right? So the ghost orchids in the Everglades have a really deep throat where the nectar sits at the bottom. And in order to pollinate them, this moth is, I believe, from what I've heard, <coughs> it is the sole pollinator of the ghost orchid, this very rare and endangered orchid that grows down in the Florida Everglades. And so, guys, I don't, I'm not 100% sure about that. I'm going on based on what I've heard. But how cool is that, that this moth has such a proboscis that it's designed in such a way that it has this extraordinary, extraordinarily long proboscis and it's for a purpose. The purpose is to be a pollinator of a, an orchid that lives in the Florida Everglades in the same habitat where this moth lives. Uh, now, you know, it feeds on other plants and I've seen them nectaring on morning glory. I've seen them nectaring on um, angel's trumpet, which is an exotic plant that lives down here that we can grow down here in South Florida. But how cool is that? What a, what a huge moth this is. And by the way, the females are actually larger. This is a male. Uh, females don't quite as readily come to lights as do the males. So one of the first things we got to do is we are going to do a little bit of surgery. Whenever you mount sphinx moths, one of the things you got to do is you will need an X-Acto knife because if you don't sever a few of these tendons, which I'm gonna make another video on, uh, there's a tendon and I'm gonna try and show it to you. Let's see here. There's a tendon right here and you wanna sever that tendon. And then there's another tendon underneath this little this little flap of skin here with scales that attaches to the forewing. So the, the hind wing has got a tendon, the forewing's got a tendon, and if you just, with an X-Acto knife, just pinch both of those, it makes the wings much, much easier to maneuver uh, so you can mount it with ease. And that's, guys, I gotta tell you, watch my other video to show, I'll show you actually how to do that. And, um, it makes mounting Sphinx mods way, way, way easier. So, uh, guys, check out that video, um, but we're going to get going mounting this bug. One thing I wanted to cover with you guys before going into any more, I've got the, the tendons severed on the thorax that hold the wings in place. But before doing that, I want to show you a few things on this specimen before we mount it. How do we tell the difference between a male and a female? Well, the boys, guys, the boys have these big, huge claspers at the back. So they, they've got these big, this big appendage that you, it opens, right? And the purpose for that appendage, I'm not going to open it up too much because it's, it's actually giving me a hard time. But this appendage right here, they actually hold on to the female during courtship. So when they're mating, th these two flaps will kind of grasp onto the female. These are called claspers. And then the penis is actually inside, right in between these two claspers. So that's how you tell the difference between a male and a female of any butterfly and moth species. Some of it's more subtle in some species. The, the sphinx moths actually have massive claspers. Like these, this, all these dark scales back here are all claspers. And uh, they're huge. And when they, when this guy's alive and he's opening his claspers, like these things right here just open wide like this. It's actually pretty cool. I've got moth scales all over my fingers. Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is the legs of a sphinx moth have some really, really big burrs. And I'm gonna show you real quick. The legs of a sphinx moth. Now, these burrs right here, 
they look a little more intimidating than uh, than they actually are. But I can tell you right now, that thing sticks. It you know it pokes, man. And they use these. If you actually pick one up, these guys have no problem trying to jab you with these burrs. So if you pick one up while it's alive, um, I, I find it mostly with the Protambulux species. Uh, they, they have these really sharp burrs, and they'll try to stab you with it. But anyway, it's not a not a big deal. They don't hurt. They don't cause any like, problems or anything like that. All right, now guys, we're gonna mount our giant sphinx, and I'm gonna do my best to uh, do this in, in a way where you can see it. Okay, guys, so your giant sphinx. It, the, the first trick with mounting any butterfly or moth is you got to have the right size board. Now. I haven't found many boards for sale that have a thorax groove wide enough for the giant sphinx. So I actually made this one myself. It's made out of balsa wood and you can see, yeah, well, there's a big thing of balsa wood on the bottom. I have some little one, little tiny things in there for spreaders, then another board, then an angled one to give a little bit of an angle to a pitch to the wings. Reason for that. When you take your specimen off the board, the wings will droop just a little bit. So I give a little bit of an angle to compensate for that droop. And now we got to measure that groove, guys. And the groove of this board is perfect for a, a huge sphinx moth like this. So size of the pin, I use a number two black enamel pin for 99% of all Lepidopter species. Uh, now that BioQuip is shut down, I guess we can order from Carolina Biological, but um, I haven't actually done that yet. And now we're going to place the pin right in the middle of the thorax. And then underneath, we want that pin to come through right in between, right in the middle, right in between the... Uh, the four legs and the, and the mid, middle legs, okay? And so once that's done, it's gotta be straight. Okay, there's not a lot to work with now, guys, because this pin's not super long. Uh, but now we are going to pin our moth into the groove. And now the wings should be able to lay flat on the board like this, guys. Um, you, you, you want it, you don't want it up here because if it's up here, now the wings don't lay flat. So you want to press it down middle of the board just far enough where the, the, where the wings will rest flat on the board, okay? Love this, guys. I love mounting these giant sphinx moths. Now, next thing we do is I take at least two pins and I put it on the left side of the abdomen in the middle of the board to hold the abdomen in place. And I'll show you why. Because we're going to start rotating this the wings. And when we do, the abdomen, when I rotate these wings to the left, like this, let me do it with this hand. When I rotate these wings this way, the abdomen wants to follow. But if I have these pins here, it stops the abdomen from twisting on the board. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to uh, take the antennae and kind of put them in the position where I want them. Okay. Sorry, guys, I got big man hands. They get in the way a little bit. Okay. So I've got the antennae. They're, they're roughly in the position where I would want them to stay. Okay. Now, I've got my, my antennae going. One thing, you always got to make sure that the legs aren't doing funny things. And because I was messing with this specimen earlier for the video, the leg was doing a little something funny, making it weird. Okay. We got the specimen right in the middle of the groove. We've got the abdomen pinned so that it can't rotate. 
We severed our tendons on the, uh, on the forewing there and the hind wing on both sides. Now it's time to get our wing into the right spot. Now, because I've severed those tendons, the wings are a lot more loose. And what we wanna do is I take a, I take a really tiny, thin, little tiny pin like this, guys. Uh, some people don't do this. Some people will actually cringe when I do this. But I, to make things easier on myself, because I'm getting older and my eyesight's not as good as it used to be, I will move the wing with a pin by the vein. And once it gets into the roughly the position where I want it, I'll pin the wing down. Okay? Now, the thorax pins or the abdomen pins I can move and I can actually create kind of a, uh, a V underneath the abdomen and prop it to the place where I want it, just like that, so it's nice and straight, okay? And then what we want, I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife to point. What we want is we want the bottom edge of the forewing to go across and make almost a straight line with the other forewing. Now I have the I have these four wings mounted up just a little bit so it's not a completely perpendicular line uh, or a completely straight line across. But that's the gauge, guys. You want your four wings to make a straight line. The bottom edges of your four wings to make a straight line, straight across the at the thorax of your butterfly or moth specimen. So now the hind wings. It's kind of a matter of how you your style. Some people like to have the the hind wings prop down like this so they can see more of them. Uh, I don't like that. I think that looks a little bit hokey, to be honest with you. So what I'll do is I'll just slide these up just like this so that there's just a little bit of a V right here that's created between the forewing and the hind wing. I'll do the same thing on this side so that it's symmetrical. Right about, no. Nope. It doesn't want to cooperate as quite as easy. Okay. All right, there. There is a beautifully mounted giant sphinx male. I mean, that's, that's a stunner right there, guys. Absolutely stunning moth. Um, I'm actually gonna snap a picture because that's gonna be a thumbnail. And guys, now the next step is we are going to want to um, pin down the wings so that it can dry without the wings curling up. And as the thing dries, the wings will curl. So you got to be cautious of that. So what I do is I, I have this um, cardstock paper, a little bit thicker than regular paper. And some people don't like using this. Some people use wax paper, which is fine. But what I'll do is I will just pin down just enough of the wing to keep the edges from curling up. And that way, and you don't want to pin it too close to the wing because you don't want to make it, if you, if you pin this down too close to the wing, it puts pressure on it and this line right here will make it crease in the wing and you don't want that. So you don't want it to pin it too close. You give it a little bit of space in between where this wing is underneath the paper, you know, at least that quarter of an inch or half an inch, half an inch down there. And then same thing right here, okay? Now, that wing isn't going anywhere. I'll do the same thing on this side, right there. I'll pin it down here and 
right there. All right, guys, now this specimen is ready to go. In fact, I'm gonna put this in my mounting board storage area and that giant sphinx specimen will sit there for probably minimum of two weeks, maybe three, and then I'll have its label created by then and we'll add it to our uh, box and we'll wind up donating probably donating it to the McGuire Center for Lepidoptera Research. So guys, hope you liked the video. I uh, hope you learned something about mounting Sphinx moths and the giant Sphinx. It's such a cool bug. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And join us on our future moth collecting and moth surveying adventures. So hope to see you soon. Take care, guys. Bye now.